It's Dr. Dev again, your cataract coach, with a small pupil cataract case. Not the tiniest of pupils, but a case where the pupil's only about four millimeters. The patient also has floppy iris syndrome from Flomax use. The first step is to put some anesthetic as well as phenylephrine, preservative free, in the anterior chamber and also under the iris. Give that a little bit of time to work, and that can help dilate the pupil more, or at least give a little bit increased tone to the muscle. Now, viscoelastic is being instilled, and you can see we're doing a viscomidriasis, trying to expand the pupil. We don't do a hard fill of viscoelastic, just enough to keep the anterior chamber pressure normal. Put our fixation ring down. We'll make our temporal incision. We're using a diamond keratome here. Single plane incision, barely nicking limbal vessels. Nice tunnel length and entering the anterior chamber. That should seal beautifully. We're now going to use two instruments. We're going to use a chopper, one chopper in each hand. Now you can use multiple other instruments. You can use some sort of virus hook. You could use a Sinsky. You can use your own chopper. You can use a um, pupil manipulator, a Y hook, anything. We choose two points 180 degrees away secure the pupil margin and push towards the angle of the eye. Now move our instruments 90 degrees away and do the same thing towards the angle of the eye, stretching it out. And that's going to be sufficient. There we go. Now instill more viscoelastic to expand the pupil further. So here's more viscoelastic as well as here. And now what started off as about a four millimeter pupil is more like a six or even six and a half millimeter pupil. And that's certainly going to be sufficient for us to proceed with the case. We'll use our caps rexus forceps to poke into the anterior lens capsule and then tear our capsule rexus. You'll recall my forceps are marked off from the tips two and a half and then five millimeters back so we can accurately judge the size of the caps rexus as we're tearing it. So just taking our time to make a nice, round, continuous, curvilinear capsorexis. Important in these cases, the viscoelastic, once it's removed, will allow the pupil to become a little smaller. So even though this looks like a good 5 or 6 millimeter dilation, maybe more, that's a temporary thing. So we're tearing a nice, generous capsorexis. Looks like we're going a little bit bigger than 5 millimeters. And we're just about to complete it. And that looks great. We're going to do hydrodissection. And what happens when we do hydrodissection? Well, of course, we separate the nucleus from the capsule, but also we'll lose viscoelastic. So watch what happens. Since I know I'll lose viscoelastic, let's try to get the nucleus out of the bag, just like that. We're using the 27-gauge cannula from the BSS to help bring the nucleus up into the anterior chamber. With the nucleus in the anterior chamber, we're now going to use the phaco probe, and there's the chopper, buzz into the nucleus, chopper around the backside, and let's get two halves. There we go. So we're using the cataract itself to hold the pupil open, to hold the iris at bay. Particularly helpful in a Flomax case such as this, where the floppy iris is held in place by the cataract nucleus itself. Taking our time to emulsify the first half, you notice that the phaco probe is placed at the iris plane, so not riding on the corneal endothelium. We try to stay away from the endothelium. So we have most of the first half by now, out of the eye by now. We'll remove that last piece, and we have about a half of the nucleus remaining. Buzz into the other half, bring it up. With the high vacuum, chopper goes around, and we can chop off a little piece and take this out of the eye. So that'll be our technique. Buzz a little bit more, chop off a small fragment, and aspirate it down. Settings on the FACO machine are a high flow, about 40 cc's a minute, maybe a little more. High vacuum, at least 400 millimeters of mercury, often higher. And then the FACO will use some FACO power modulations to limit the total amount of ultrasonic energy placed in the eye. There is an epinuclear shell here. We'll try to grab this with primarily vacuum. And here's where we want to be very careful 
I'm going to try to grab a thick edge of it with just vacuum. No energy here, just vacuum. And once we have that, let's try to bring the whole piece up. That's the big epinuclear piece. That's like a big shell. We don't want to put energy now because if you buzz through the piece, you may inadvertently hit the poster caps, and we certainly don't want that. So again, trying again, different quadrant this time, using uh, only the vacuum level, no ultrasound energy at all. And we want to grab on a piece, and once we finally get that grasp of an edge of this shell, the whole shell should come up pretty quickly. So let's try this seg segment, and again, trying to vacuum. There's no rush here. We'll take our time. You know what? Let's not risk it. Let's put the eye, probe in the eye instead. That's safer. It has the plastic or polymer tip. And we can use that to better grab the remaining epinuclear shell as well as the cortex. So there's the epinuclear pieces. We can aspirate these down using the second instrument to help push the pieces in the port if they become um, blocked. So again, taking our time here. Now, you don't have much of a view towards the periphery. As you can see, the pupil has come down now, now that most of the viscoelastic has been removed from the eye. And so again, we want to grab as much of this as we can and clean this up. This is a step that you don't want to rush. You want to take your time here. The hard part of removing the nucleus is gone. That's done. There's that epinuclear shell. Finally, we get this whole big shell to come up. Just using vacuum, aspirating it down, that looks much better. Now there's very little cortex to remove. We'll just take our time and get that as well. Things look really nice here. At this point, the tech's loading up our lens for implantation in the eye. In this case, we're just using a monofocal lens, non-toric. So there we go. So we're probably down to about a five millimeter pupil, maybe four and a half. We'll instill our cohesive viscoelastic to fill the capsule bag. That will give a little more dilation. There you go. Now you can see the edge of the capsule rexus. That looks great. Here comes our lens already loaded up into the injector. And we'll deliver this into the capsule bag. Important, if you can't see the edge of your rexus, make sure you're going to deliver the lens sufficiently deep in the eye. We do want to make sure that the entire lens, the optic, both haptics, are all completely within the capsule bag. So there's the lens opening up. Now you know the lens has an optic size of 6 millimeters, and that looks positively huge in this eye. And you can see this is a smaller eye, smaller white-to-white, -white, hyperopic eye. What am I doing now? With viscoelastic still in the eye, let's use the chopper to lift up the iris in all quadrants to make sure there's no residual cortex hiding from us or any cataract chips or pieces. So that's clean. We're happy there. We'll put the eye probe in, take out our viscoelastic, including from behind the eye well, and we'll finish up the case. At the end of the case, we'll hydrate the incisions. And we'll be careful not to let the iris prolapse out of the eye. It is a floppy iris syndrome case after all. So again, the eye well securely placed within the capsule bag, removing the rest of the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. Things are looking great. We're going to be done with this case relatively soon. So, important case to learn a few techniques here. The technique of... Pupil stretching is something that most psychiatric surgeons can certainly pick up early in their careers and will serve you well for the challenging cases just like this one.